CO2 diffusion, one of the most important part of your CO2 setup. Well, actually, all the parts of CO2 setup is important, but this is one of the mainly important things. Let's get to it. Now, in the last videos, we went through CO2 sources as well as how to regulate and control the flow of CO2 in your CO2 setup. In this video, we are going to talk about something very important, which is diffusion. And we'll go over all the options that you have and how well they do. But before we go on, if you are new here and you want to talk about aquariums as well as learn about aquariums, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you know when I make new videos as well as do live streams. Now, as I mentioned previously in my live chats as well as the other videos, CO2 diffusion is a very important part of your CO2 systems. Now, I notice a lot of people do skim on this part of the CO2 systems, and which I don't understand because you're spending all the money on the CO2 regulator, the CO2 you know, source, how you have it set up, and they don't actually pay attention to how well it diffuses in your tank. And it's very important because you want that efficiency of CO2 diffusing in your tank, otherwise it's really no use. So let's go over all the different options. All right, diffusion is important, so we gotta go through all the options you have for diffusing CO2 in your tank. And of course, the first thing we're gonna talk about is natural equilibrium, which I've explained in the previous video, is just getting CO2 naturally from the air itself and getting it in your tank with using surface agitation. Now, of course, you can use your outflow of your filter to actually push the water out, create some surface agitation, create those waves, and you have good gas exchange on your tank going on. But one thing that a lot of people don't know is if you get these things called lily pipes, they're glass outflow pipes, which I have right here. This is a lily pipe. What it does is it hooks up to your tank right here and it flows, the water flows out and it creates a vortex on the top of your water. That vortex is creating a lot of surface area for gas exchange. So that's one way you could actually get some decent gas exchange and surface agitation going for a tank if you're using kind of that nat natural equilibrium way. Now let's talk passive diffusion as I've mentioned in other previous videos and using the Fluval 20G system which you will see here. It's a passive system. Basically you have a container in your tank you release the CO2 into it periodically and just la let it naturally diffuse the concentrated CO2. It's concentrated, so it's going to be much better than your typical natural equilibrium way of doing it. And just let it flow and diffuse into the tank. And you want to make sure, for example, this is the Fluval 20G system. Sorry, it's dirty. Basically, it sits in your tank like this. Make sure you have flow going, okay? Maybe you want to put a pump that goes and shoots the water through and so that the CO2 that diffuses underneath here will shoot throughout the tank itself. And you have many options for a CO2 bell, which is one is getting that system there. The other thing is that they sell individual CO2 bells on Amazon itself. And of course, there's the do-it-yourself way, which simply is take a bottle like this, cut it up like this right here on the bottom. And then what you do is just put a suction cup into here right and then you stick it into the wall of your inside of your tank and just release some co2 in here uh, regularly and then just let it diffuse you know naturally into your tank with the purified co2 not purified concentrated whatever but you get the gist right it's just not as efficient as pressurized co2 but it's more efficient than just natural equilibrium and you can make your own and like i said in the previous video on the source co2 sources is that if you find some way to get those cartridges and inject those cartridges because some of these have like a spray thing that you can inject the or dispel the co2 and you can use that and then dispel it into the bell itself but you gotta be careful because it actually blasts the co2 out of the canister that way so you have to do really 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 tiny that is if you want to actually do all that just to get co2 in your tank now let's talk about mechanical diffusion. This is usually used when using a pressurized CO2 system or some kind of CO2 system that you might get that's already pre-made for you on Amazon. Now there's actually four types, four major categories that we'll go under. We'll talk about the least efficient way of diffusing CO2 in your tank. That is using in-tank atomizers or mister. This right here is in-tank mister atomizer. You just put it into your tank like this. The CO2 comes out of here and then it creates this little misty bubbles. Now there are many, many options for these in-tank diffusers. There are glass, there are metal, 
There are plastic, some are discs, some are bells like this right here. But again, different types of in-tank diffusers that you could use, misters or whatever. You use them, but it's the least efficient way for mechanical diffusion. Basically, they say it's about 40% less effective than the other options that we're gonna talk about next. The other thing that's really good about these diffusers, these in-tank diffusers, is that they could be pretty cheap to get. Now, let's talk about in-tank reactors. Now, this is an old way of, an old school way of doing it. And I used to do this in my 120 gallon. It's still in there. I don't want to put my hand in there right now because it's dark there. I don't know what's in that tank. I haven't touched that tank in ages. Haven't cleaned it out in years. So I don't know what's living in there right now. Yeah, that's scary. But basically I have a model here. This is the Chung model, the water box model. <laughs> really basically what it is, is if you notice this right here is a vacuum. You know the end of a vacuum okay and this is a small i think 80 gph pump here and i just stuck it onto here and what i would do is probably drill a hole right around here or right here and then just silicone a hard line into it and then just plug in the co2 line into it and then silicone it and then just put the co2 line and make it pump the co2 into this chamber here and then while the pump is going it'll go ahead and move those co2 bubbles around and make that agitation work really really well and then diffuse the co2 quicker into this chamber here and then underneath here the co2 gets released and of course with the pump pumping it it should push the CO2 into the tank itself. And of course, if you have flow and you want to make sure the flow is right, put a power head underneath here and just push the water around into your tank. This is basically how an in-tank reactor works. We used to use it a lot. If you haven't already figured it out, you could actually still use this for your tank or if you have a sump, use it in your sump, diffuse the CO2 in your sump and let the sump carry the water up into your tank and you have CO2 enriched waters for your tank. But if you're really crafty, there's many ways you can make this work uh, in tank reactor. You can put those bio balls in here to make it, you know, push around the CO2 much better and to have it diffuse much better. But if you're crafty, lots of ways to do it. The same concept of how inline reactors work. Next thing we're talking about is inline misters or atomizers. And this is one of the choices that I use a lot in my tanks. Basically, what happens is you hook up the line coming in from your filter or if you want you could actually hook up a separate line going through a power head and just pump water through it and basically what you do is hook up the co2 into here and then it'll push out the bubbles into this little container here or containment area here and while the water is going through and then diffuse the co2 into the line itself and pushes out into your tank now the cost of these are mm, okay you know you could get a cheap one for i think about 25 dollars a really good one from like say greenleaf aquarium works really well and really really well actually i have to admit but they cost a lot more like 50 bucks or something it depends on the model you get and how big of one that you get now the cons about this is a lot of people don't like but i like it myself is that it misses your tank it sprites your tank all right so it makes your tank look like seven up or sprite or whatever that's what they call spriting your tank so you'll see a lot of co2 bubbles in the tank itself i like it because i actually get to see it come out of the outtake of my filter so i'll know that it's actually working and tested to make sure that the CO2 is actually going through the, the, the mister in here. But that's really up to you. If you don't mind the spriting, I really suggest and highly suggest using this type of diffusing system. And finally, the next diffusion system we're gonna talk about is an inline reactor. This is actually something that you hook into your filter or you know a separate line, again, the same as your other diffuser that we just talked about through a power head. And basically what it does is push the water through here goes into this little reactor here. It's an enclosed reactor, okay? And then pushes the water out here into your tank. And basically what you do is hook in the CO2 here. This is one example of a model. This is, I believe, Gulfstream's Insta inline reactor, okay? But there's a lot of type of brands out there. If you wanna know what brands there are, just take a look at the links down below in the video. So basically, CO2 gets injected into here. So there's a bubble here and there's a little spinner here, a propeller that is pushed by the water flow coming in here. And it spins a propeller and it puts the CO2 in there and it spins it and then it diffuses the CO2, it breaks up the CO2 into this little diffusion chamber and it enriches the water with CO2 and it goes out to your tank. 
Now the only drawback that I found with these type of reactors is depending on how the reactors are made, especially like something like this that has a propeller in it. The problem with that is that you need a lot of GPH, but you could actually fit up or make a reactor. And again, you could do, do it yourself and there's videos out there to do it. I'll make a video later about how to do one. Is that you don't have to have some kind of mechanical system go in there that, that you know, diffuses the bubbles. It could just push it through bio balls or something like that and diffuses it that way much better as well. So all in all, I think the best diffusion system you can use with pressurized CO2 is an inline reactor or an inline mister or atomizer or if you have a sump or you don't mind having a contraption in your tank is an in-tank reactor okay but it'd be even better if you have a sump just put in your sump and it'll work great that way so there you have a CO2 diffusion and how important it is to your tank very important because not only do you have to gauge on how much CO2 you're putting in your tank based on you know bubbles per second or what have you and all that stuff, but it has to diffuse right. So one bubbles per second is going to give you more diffuse CO2 if you have a great diffusion system. If you have a not so great diffusion system, well then that one bubble per second isn't as efficient. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about how to actually use CO2 for your tank, how to measure it, as well as how much you need. Because that is a very complicated way how to figure it out. It's a lot of test and go kind of thing, but I'll cover that in the next video. So if you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you know when that video comes out. And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment below. Do me a huge favor, smash that like button as well as share where you can. And remember guys, I love you guys. Stay wet with your tanks. I will see you in the next video.